Okay, so uh, this is another follow-on video of this AAC algorithm. So in that last video, it was really depressing. I made this code that would loop through this six, like the CPX itself was taking data and we were putting it on this computer and running the AAC algorithm and it was giving us the frequencies we wanted. And then I would put that code on here on the CPX and it just wouldn't run fast enough. And I want to say the culprit is, is Python. I don't want to blame it on Python, but there is a, a huge overhead cost with running Python code versus an embedded C code. And uh, I feel like maybe eventually I uh, would be a good idea to convert this code over to, to Arduino and, and put it on here and have it compile as machine language. Um, but I wanted to, I, it's late and I wanted to get something to work just so I kind of felt good about the algorithm and anything, everything like that. So I realized that there is a module called sound device that you can get for Python on your computer, not for the CPX, but on your computer. And so I, I dropped the AAC algorithm in here and um, I basically like set up the record audio. Six, I did everything exactly the same thing. 16,000 Hertz, 640 data points, a tau of 20, lowest frequency 50. But I did some extra cool stuff just to make this fancier is that I, I put um, some figures um, with the uh, ion, which I think is like interactive um, element and uh, a pause here. And so what's gonna happen is it's gonna do this record element, it's gonna record it, and it's gonna run through this frequency sweep. And since Python on my computer is super fast, um, it'll run through it in essentially real time. And uh, I, brought my, I brought my guitar here. And so I'm gonna, I'm gonna run through this code. Oh, I don't wanna get push. I want to run it. Uh, Python guitar tuner. Um, and so it's gonna open up these two um, code, uh, windows here and I'm gonna I'm gonna resize them and uh, so over here on the right it's spitting out like the frequency and the intersections found there's a lot of prints in there that are like kind of annoying but basically if I pluck my E string here you see it's it's giving 82 when I talk and stuff like that it kind of gets noisy and so sometimes it's a seal island is not perfect but I bet you if you threw some filtering in there you would get it to go um, if we go back to Tony you know our signals are uh, Oh, wow, it just kind of popped up. It's 82, 111, 152. Those are the first three strings. So if we do, let's see, E string, 82. And then next one should be 111. And then the next one should be what, 152, so we got 149. The G string fix freaks out. Um, actually, it's getting 200. What is it supposed to be? supposed to be at 213 I guess that's actually not that bad uh, let's go back let's see what about the B string 253 and 340 yeah and what's really cool that I like is that if you look at this top figure and I if I hit the high E string versus the low E string you can totally see like the periodicity like shrink and, and, and go up. And when I'm talking, you can actually see like all, there's like a lot of noise in the data. And that's really just because like I'm talking and I have a raspy voice. Honestly, I need to drink a ton of water. Um, but yeah, so th I, I thought this was kind of a cool experiment. I, I really love music and I really like sound and, and, and frequencies and things. And I, I thought it was kind of neat to make this like real time um, algorithm here. It, it's slow, you know, I'm sure you could speed it up and make it faster. I mean, I, again, if you wrote this in C, and compiled it to machine language. I'm sure it would run a lot faster. Um, but yeah, this is really neat. So uh, that's all I wanted to post. Um, you know, I hope you uh, enjoy uh, the rest of your night. I guess I'll talk to you guys later. Peace. How do I do this? Stop.